Hey everyone, welcome to Softjust Classes. Let us continue with our discussions on different questions from the NTA NET June 2023 economics paper. So the question in front of us here is Tobin's Q theory. Okay. So uh, let us look at the statements related to Tobin's Q theory of investment and choose the correct option. There is an increase in the price of output. Okay. So Tobin's Q theory of investment. When should a firm invest? Investment decisions. So investment decisions is based on the price of the uh, output, the price of the output, then marginal product of uh, capital, that is MPK, right? And the rate of depreciation, etc. So let us have a look at the given statements. So first one is increase in the price of output, increase in the marginal product of capital, um, increase in the rate of interest. No, if rate of interest increases, then of course it will be. Uh, costly to borrow right funds that is take a loan and it will obviously decrease the investment so that is why it will not encourage the firm to invest so this cannot be the correct answer there is a decrease in rate of depreciation right and marginal benefit of a investment exceeds marginal cost definitely obviously profit margin so that means a b um, <coughs> d e these are the correct statements here so out of these options we have a b d e as number three so three is the correct option here right next one now next question in front of us is about the sufficient estimators okay properties of sufficient estimators so <clears throat> Here we are going to look at again the given statements and choose the correct option. So uh, sufficient esti for sufficient uh, estimators, it should be unbiased. It may not be unbiased. Of course, see there are five properties for an estimator for an estimator to be good, right? That is unbiasedness, minimum variance, consistency, um, <coughs> efficiency, and sufficiency. So when the first four properties uh, are not followed we check the fifth one so that means when the estimator is not unbiased is not minimum is not consistent right so all after crossing these then only we will uh, have the property of sufficient estimator so that means here the correct answer should be the first one that is it may not be unbiased correct that is why we are going to the next one uh, it may be unbiased no if it is on uh, it may yeah it may be unbiased it can be unbiased or not right but it should be minimum there should be minimum variance also that also we have to check so uh, <clears throat> next one is it is always consistent it is not always consistent not correct minimum variance unbiased estimator okay so the estimator can be biased or unbiased but the estimator should be minimum variance and uh, it should be consistent and also, we have to check the efficiency and sufficiency if required. So, properties for an estimator to be good are the following. That is unbiasedness, minimum variance, consistency, efficiency and sufficiency. That means A, B, C, E. A, B, C, E. So, that is option 4 is the correct answer. as the following okay uh, list one we are given different names of economists and list two are given different theory names right and we have to match okay so here Kuznet is related to inverted uh, u-curve hypothesis so this is a3 NERX is related to balanced growth theory b2 Leibenstein is critical minimum effort thesis, that is C4. And Scumpeter is related to innovation and entrepreneurship, so D1. So that is 3, 2, 4, 1. We have 3, 2, 4, 1. Option 2 is the correct answer. Okay, next question is from mathematical economics. So here we are given two lists. Again, we have to match the following. That is on the a uh, first order and second order condition we have to match the correct shape of the curve right slope and curvature first order derivative is the slope and the second order derivative is curvature 
Now, uh, first one is positively sloped and <coughs> excuse me, positively sloped and this is greater than zero implies convex, right? So positively sloped and convex. So positively sloped here we have two positively sloped that is one and four, but this is concave and this is convex. So four that is a four. B is positively sloped and concave. So definitely this is 1. B1. Again this is negatively sloped and concave. Negatively sloped and concave. So this is 2. C2. And the finally D3. Right. That is negatively sloped and convex. So we have 4, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. So, 3 is the correct answer here. Right. Next question is on the Bertrand's duopoly model. So, this question is from Oligopoly chapter. Let us have a look at the statements and choose the correct answer. Okay. <clears throat> Reaction curves are derived from isoprofit maps which are convex to the axis. True. The point of intersection of the two reaction curves reflects a stable equilibrium. True. Reaction curves are derived from isoprofit maps which are concave to the axis. False. The point of intersection of the two reaction curves reflects unstable equilibrium. False. Firm's behavior pattern is such that they learn from past experience. False. So A and B. That is the correct statement. Uh, related to Bertrand's two poly models, so that is option A is our correct answer, A and B only. 